Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Phoenix, Arizona, it's time for Phoenix Business Radio, spotlighting the city's best businesses and the people who lead them. Hi, uh, welcome to Cultivating Collaboration at Avantage. My name is Sean. I'm the founder of Avantage, and I have Mark Jamnik, my co-host and sidekick here with us. And our wonderful guest, will, which we'll uh, introduce in a second. How are you being, Mark? I'm doing great. Great to be back here. Look be at this. We're person. on episode number three. It's all really excited. Nice. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what are you excited about? Well, I'm excited about the, the two guests we have coming up. Well, the guests we have coming up here today. And, um, you know, I've had an opportunity to not only talk with her and work with her, uh, really. So I'm, I'm excited about having more people be exposed to the the type of insights that she shares. So that's, I'm really excited about that question. Wonderful, wonderful. And I'm, I'm excited about a couple things. Number one, having Elsa here with us and, and actually the impact that she's had in our community and also the platform itself. And I'd like to share that real quick with uh, Elsa that because of one of her questions, one of her feedbacks that she gave us, we are we're, we're doing our biggest revamp of the site. We're completely redesigning it. We're in the middle of, we just finished this specs. We're in, uh, in development now. One of her feedbacks, one of her questions was, how do we connect with other members easier, quicker? And we are, our platform, it is a, a community-based, so it is about connecting with other entrepreneurs. And we took that to heart. We, we put a lot of thought into it, and we've redesigned the site. And I like to... Uh, to uh, say that we now we're going to have a member directory and uh, it's always a result of your feedback. Elsa, so thank you. Oh, you're <laughs> very welcome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay, so without uh, further ado, I want to go ahead and introduce you, uh, Elsa Johnson. You're a coach and, and a mindset coach and, uh, and a business coach. And I learned something new about you today, that you were raised in a tiny village in Denmark and calling it a village was generous, right? Absolutely. It was only three houses, five farms, and uh, a boarding school that your mother and father actually started when you were born. That's correct. That's awesome. And uh, in, it, it looked like in fall, the population of this city will triple or quadruple when, when kids <laughs> show up from 20 to 120. Or, yeah, that's six oh. times. <laughs> oh, much more than that. You know, we're, as I said, three houses, five farms. You can imagine, you know, there was right. more pigs and cows than there was people. <laughs> but then in the fall, when the students showed up, there was like 80 or 90 students every fall co- coming into this little... What an awesome thing to have, to have new, kind of new visitors, new friends come and go. I yeah. think that is such a great place to grow up. So from there, uh, you ended up on the journey of life, life coaching, which we're going to talk about. But your fundamental, uh, you fundamentally believe that everyone deserves to feel value for being who they are as an individual and in all aspects of life. So let's uh, let's kind of uh, dig into that a little bit. You know, being that our members are business owners and entrepreneurs, and and you also coach a lot of CEOs and business leaders. How would you say, what are, what are the top challenges or the blind spots that, that a leader or a business person uh, you find most common amongst everyone? So that's probably a good place to start. Oh, absolutely. Um, the first point of that is we all do it, no matter where you are in life. Mm-hmm. You know, whether you run your own business, you're an employee, um, you stay at home with your kids, you get in your own way. Right. You just simply... Get into a routine of the way you think, the way you act, and you don't think, oh, maybe I could just stop up one second. Maybe there's a totally different solution here. You know, we we are so programmed to just keep going, keep going, keep going. When you look at it as a business owner, a lot of times it's because they've been successful up to this point, maybe even amazingly successful. Mm -hmm. So why change something that's working? The thing is, when you start looking and saying, what changes can I do? It doesn't mean that everything is going to fall apart. It might mean that things can grow up and, and get bigger. You know, if you look to physical therapy or physical fitness, your muscles have to break down in order to be stronger. Right. Exactly. And that's the same thing with our mindset. We, we have to sort of tear it apart a little bit and then put it. Which the military does a great job of that. Oh, when absolutely. you go through a camp and, and try to rebuild you and then the Marines do that. Oh, yeah, right. I know. <laughs> I am mother of a Marine. So oh, <laughs> I know. I know the uh, 
<laughs> you know, I know that routine. And in, in that bringing that up, you know, that that's so amazing because you, you stand there and or sit there and look like I saw some videos of the Marine training. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting there as a mother looking at it. You got my son to do that, <laughs> you know, and, and it's um, that's the same thing with a CEO or, you know, a business owner, an entrepreneur is that because it, it is so easy to get stuck in that that habit of the way I've, I have been thinking that sometimes it's, the, as I said, the smallest little different in perspective that can open up a whole new avenue. Is there something, because you and I have had an opportunity to work together, uh, both, you know, as, as a coach mm-hmm. and as a, as a client. So it's been, it's been really a wonderful thing to get to know you. And so what would you say is that catalyst that you tend to find where, where is there a breakdown in their business? Is there a breakdown? What do you see as the most common trait as to why they want to start to look at the mindset? The one thing why I really love working mm-hmm. with, with entrepreneurs is they're people of action. Mm-hmm. And if they just constantly feel like they're butting their head against the wall, yeah. they're like, mm, there got to be something different out there. I'm just not seeing it. So it's the willingness. It's really the willingness to actually go there. It's so popular called in coaching. Your desire to change has to be bigger than the desire to stay the same. Mm-hmm. And that shows up much, much faster with people who are ready. Mm-hmm. Very cool. So, yeah. How did you get into this? What was the what was the why for you as you as you got started? For me, it was for many years, and and this is total honest disclosure. I thought the whole personal development industry was, you know, what do you need that for? You know, I moved yeah. out of my parents' home when I was seventeen. I've been on my own my whole life. You know, I can do anything. You know, and I think that's a lot of mentality behind people, right? Especially people who go somewhere, and. And then all of a sudden, one day, after a long career in both corporate and finance and having my own business and small business environment, I was sitting on the couch one day and says, am I really doing what I want to be doing? Have I been doing what I want to be doing? And am I excited? Because my excitement level for my business at that time had really diminished. And, and then I started looking, saying, there has to be other solutions, just like I'm asking my clients to, to be open to. And... From that point on, I said, what I'm doing now found me, not the other way around. It was like you, I compare it to if you have a swiveled up sea sponge and you start dripping water on it and then all of a sudden, it, you know, it just explodes. And that's how I feel about coaching. It's how I feel about being, being a catalyst, being a navigator for other people to really live their best lives. And it, it's, as a business owner, your, your business is your life and it affects everything that you do. And I really want people to to just feel that, that, that you can really, you don't have to choose. And that's, to me, it's just exciting. Beautiful metaphor, and I feel that way. Go ahead. And, and that that passion, it comes completely through. You know, it's, you, you're one of our most active, most engaged, and most valued members on our platform. You've, you've done a lot of your coaching. I know people love it. The reviews you've, re- you've received are, are amazing. And, and I think it's because you're so passionate about it and it's not a job for you. It's really a calling. And, and it came and, and uh, called you, right? So working in, 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 the, in the context of, you know, in the Vantage community, you know, we, we look at our community uh, more as almost a team. And, it, and it, you know, a lot of the companies, they, they promote a team and culture within their organization, with their employees and with their, within their, uh, it's different than what they promote to, towards the outside. We really believe because of the uniqueness of our platform and the type of people that join our platform, freelancers, entrepreneurs, business owners that share a lot of common challenges. And because we're able to trade services and you know, co-elevate and, and help one another, I really think that team concept with us not only exists within our team, internal team, it's something that we can expand and extend to the rest of the community because we feel like, and this is, you've used that a lot, Mark, too, we feel like we have a, a go-to team of experts that we can always go to. And there's that whole relay thing that you talk about where you can connect with one person, utilize their skills and services, take the result, take it to another person and accomplish the goals you want. So so that in, in the in the context of the team building and the team culture, how does that being you know self 
limiting thought? How does that limit one to to hone in and and build their leadership skills and and become a better leader and a better team player? Well, they, I could go in so many directions in that one, but mm-hmm. I want to keep it in that collaborative spirit that you're mm-hmm. talking about in the community. And I think the first part of it is understanding that, you know, the tide mm-hmm. rises all boats. Right. You know, get away from this competitive feeling that, oh, because there's this person, I think there's all the coaches on the platform, right? Right. And I could be, <laughs> become very protective of what I do. But where I could lean in and say, they have something to learn me. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know everything and I shouldn't know everything because I'm also on a journey just like my clients. The other thing is because there's so much talent in the group that each one of them are are there to provide that talent and give it with a giving spirit. Right. That That really in itself is just it's an amazing community. It's not like if you go to some of the other platforms where you have the talent that advantages, they don't have. Uh, um, it's a transaction. It's a transaction. It's a very transactional exactly. word. Yeah, you, thank you're you right. for helping me with the word. Yeah, there. because we, I've heard that feedback from others, and this is what people write in, in the reviews, that, that that whole uh, exchanging value and services, there's something magical about it. It's it's because you feel like you're giving as much as you're receiving so it's not a transactional thing. Uh, I, I agree with you. And that's that's one of the, uh, the things you bring in. You know, to the point of there are several coaches or a lot of coaches on the platform. This is the other, th- the other thing that we're witnessing is our members are building their own little teams, little little tribes. So you you tend to work with a few, maybe five, maybe 10 members. You know, even though our goal is to have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of users and members, I think eventually it's going to be little pockets of communities that they work together. They trade and, and exchange services. Because that's a, when you come to trading services, especially services, there's a level of trust that in anything, in if it's accounting, it's if it's graphic design, if it's attorney, which, you know, we're, we'll be uh, coming up next. Uh, there's that trust factor where you don't need, on when you buy a physical goods or fra- product, you know, as long as it shows up, it's in good quality, <clears throat> it's there. If it's bad, you return it. It's less friction. But if you're trusting your books and your accounting, or if you hire a coach and you're sharing a lot of your internal thoughts, that trust factor is really humongous. And that's why we see those little pockets, little teams being built, and and they do the most frequent trades and, and services with one, with one another. Absolutely. And, and as you're speaking, something I think that's extremely important for somebody who's building their business is, first of all, you, they're not on your payroll, right? They mm-hmm. they you hire them or you work with them for one specific service. But what that brings, on the other hand, is they have so much influence from other clients that they work with that you know you get a really honest perspective. You, you don't get an employee who is who is there only to serve you, right? 100%. They, get, they bring in so they much more. They understand your pains. They're business owners, just like you. They're entrepreneurs. Exactly. They share your, your values and your challenges. And they bring mm-hmm. in constantly new perspective of saying, oh, you know what? I I recently just learned this new technique or I recently just did this thing and it was really powerful. Whereas if if they're, you know, in your community, they're not exposed to that. So working with people like that, you really get a much more up-to-date, much more um, valuable insight into what's going on in, in, in your industry. Right. Yeah, and one of the things that, you know, you and I met now almost now a year ago, uh, it's hard to believe, and now this is the first time we've actually seen each other in person. I'm like, oh, you actually are outside of a box. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, Getting back to the real world here. And so um, the thing that really impressed me as we were starting to talk and get to know each other as, you know, we had a chance to meet on those Friday calls is your background. And not only do you have this psychology background, and and this is actually the first that I'm hearing about, the fact that you grew up on literally a uh, three to five (laughs) person (laughs) home, essentially. Um, And so you have this amazing background in just the psychology as well as as business. So could you kind of speak to blending those two things? Because I I really feel like as you and I have worked together, you've really had an opportunity to help me see things that I'm like— you know, I've been on this journey for 10 years and I'm like, I, you'd think that I have like un, unpeeled a, enough of the onion away. And yet you, in your side, 
of your perspective as well as business, you really bring that together. So could you kind of talk a little bit more about that? Because I really think that's a powerful piece inside of mindset because of how you say your business is your life and those two things really blend. And I really see that you get that and you bring both of those expertises together. So, Oh, absolutely. So it, it, it does start all the way back to, you know, the year I was born, my, my parents, they started this boarding school for children who didn't quite fit into the regular school system. And in Europe, boarding schools are so much more utilized than they are here, right? So I grew up in that entrepreneurial environment. I used to kid and say I had 80 other brothers and sisters in front of me before I could get attention from my parents, right? So I know that perspective of saying it is your life. It is absolutely life and it affects you how how you deal with, how you show up for your children if you only have 10 minutes a day, right? The other thing is that after I moved away from home, I worked in Switzerland, I worked in Spain, I worked in Holland. Then I met my husband and, and at that time I was in, in finance, in international finance. Met my husband who's an American, moved 6,000 miles away and we have as a couple, also lived in Denmark. We lived in China. We have lived in California. We lived in Illinois. We lived in Philadelphia. And now here in Scottsdale. So I have experienced so much transition in my life that I understand that you have to find the constant. You have to find the constant that really truly makes you you. And if you don't do that in, in business as well in personal life, it is so exhausting. Yeah. You know, it, it's like... If I had to reinvent myself for every move, oh, I don't even know. I, I would. I wouldn't be done spinning. <laughs> right, right. And and you bring all of those experiences with you, and that's really the things that, as you and I have been working together on certain things, you know, I I'm now also hearing some of the things of of where I'm headed. How those things that you're talking about, you're not. You didn't read them in a book. No. And you've lived them. And you can really speak to that point. And I think that's really the power of a coach. And as you were alluding to a bit more inside of our platform, there are a lot of different coaches. And, and it isn't. I never wanted to look at it as, as you as competition, right? It's like you bring the different piece. That's I bring a different piece. And, and someone else brings a different piece. And that's really all of those experiences come together. So Yeah, I think that term, the name coach, is such a, a generic and a wide ranging because you, you can be a basketball coach to, you know, a, a life. So so there is all types of coaches and we can all use coaches going back to the whole uh, sports analogy. You know, you can get a bunch of guys together and play basketball and, you know, have fun and do pretty well. But if you want to win, you need you need a coach that has the experience that can from the outside can watch and tell you, you know, the things you can Im improve on. So it's no different than that, you know. Elsa, you do you do CEO life and uh, and performance review coaching. So a couple of products or services that you offer on our platform. One is the CEO life, and what the other one is the mindset upgrade. Could you kind of go in a little bit more detail? What each one? Maybe start with it with a CEO life performance review. What is that process? What does that entail? You know, why should CEOs and leaders uh, take advantage of that? Well, I think it, it's like taking the temperature of your life, mm -hmm. right? Um, as, as I said before, it's so important that you, that you consider your whole life. Right. Um, because you can't be a 10 or you can be, but finding a balance between the way you show up at home, in your show, social life, in your business um, is, is really important. But a lot of times we don't take that sort of snapshot at where we are now. Mm -hmm. We do it with our employees or with our contractors, you know, on a yearly basis. But I also think it's important for ourselves. And you mentioned the term coach. I've, I've, I'm leaning more and more into that. I'm a mind and idea navigator for people. I'm, I'm not necessarily, you know, because you, in, in coaching, I believe that you have everything within yourself. You just haven't found it yet. Right. right so it's exactly. my job to navigate you. And that life performance review is sort of that. It, it's that journey of starting to figure out what am I not utilizing that is already within me? And it's digging deeper in your self-limiting thoughts and maybe going back to some of the, the stories that you have, you built on your, uh, in your uh, mind and, and also kind of the aspirations, the goals you set for yourself, what, you know, living your potential, what I call it is right. It's kind of digging deeper in those. Absolutely. And, and it's like understanding how, where one aspect of your life is tying in with another one. Like a client I was working with last year, 
she she came to me and says, well, you know, I sort of have limiting beliefs or that's such a popular buzz term in, in coaching, right? <laughs> but it's just, I have some ideas around my own persona, my, my, my sort of my body weight. She really had body issues, right? right? And she wasn't quite sure if it actually was affecting anything. And because she is in a space where she's a lot on lives, she's a lot out with people, she wasn't performing 100% herself because in the back of her head, there was constantly this little thought that says, oh, you know, my shirt is not tucked in right or, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm looking a little too chubby today, all those things. Once we were able to sort of remove that from her and she felt comfortable and knowing that when she showed up, people didn't really care about how she looked. They cared about how she showed up. Right. And, and provided her services, then, you know, her her results got quite a bit better last year. So that's amazing. Uh, it, it's it's like that's why I call it a life performance review. It's it's not high performance or it, it's not success performance. It's life performance because it's uh, you know it is your entire life. It is. It's it's, it's everything is kind of in. It's a mindset thing, and you know we can be masterful and skillful in whatever it is we do. Uh, but at the end of it, if you, your mindset is not quite there, uh, then you only achieve so much. <clears throat> yeah, no, this is great. Um, and I, I would say, too, I know you, um, John, also alluded to the fact that you do the mindset upgrade. And that's actually what you and I are working on together. Uh-huh. To, and so um, if I could give a mini commercial, uh, <laughs> you know, I've been spending, uh, I've spent the last 10 years working um, on everything that I possibly could about personal development, um, including becoming a Tony Robbins coach. So, you know, there's a lot of things that I have looked at and worked on. And I have to say that I'm really impressed with the questions that you're able to ask me and dig in. And I, I, that's the real big piece is if you're willing to be open and to look into, there's a, there's a way for you to, to, to dig in. So whether it's someone new that's getting into it or, uh, whether you've, you've been, coached before or have a regular coach, I, I just have to say, you know, I just, I wanted to make sure I gave you a little commercial for that. So it's I'm been, per- it's been really an honor to, to work with you. Oh, I appreciate it very much. And there's one thing that I want to sort of point out to people because they always say, you know, why do I really need a coach to ask me those questions? Right. Because somebody else might be able to ask you those same questions is I have absolutely no interest in the outcome. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I'm not your wife or your employees, or your best friends. I am just here to present you with the options. And then it's your job to decide what is best for you. And because I can be such a neutral, you know, Switzerland. Yeah, in this, Switzerland. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. In this whole thing, you live there, you're like, yeah, I, yeah. I got this. <laughs> you, you know, it gives, it gives you freedom to make those choices for yourself. And then you and I can work on that you feel strong enough mentally and emotionally to put those into life. And, and I think that that in itself is a huge, huge benefit for people to work with somebody like myself. That you don't have that thought that, oh, why is she asking me this? Awesome. And that mindset upgrade is a three-month program, right? That's a three-month upgrade. So yep. it's a good amount of time spent. You can get dig really deep. Again, deal with those self-limiting thoughts. And, and towards the end, uh, the goal is to to have a new uh, kind of a revitalized look at the way you can perform in your life and live in your potential and happier and more successful in business. So it's a win-win, right? Yeah, I I call it my EVA. It's my Mm -hmm. emotions, my visions, and aligning that with your actions. You know, it's like, it's really important because all your emotions are influencing your actions. Mm -hmm. And, but if you don't have a vision for what, those emotions or those actions are going to go towards, then we m- we might as well not do anything, right? You you got to know where you're going. So it's- part of it is is helping them articulate what it is that they their goal is they they, they want to achieve, right? Oh, it's, absolutely. So that's a, a lot of times that's you know that clarity, mental clarity, and and what it is you want and you're trying to achieve in whatever area of your life. I think that's half of the battle. If you know specifically and then kind of are able to define what it is you want then then everything else you do is sort of aligns itself to it so i think that's the huge part of uh, the value of what you offer yeah it, it it's just reminded me of when we lived in china you know we had a driver mm-hmm. and i don't know how many times after we lived there for a while my husband and i would get in the car and we would sit there 
And then our driver would turn around to us and say, Woman Chu, which in Chinese means, where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> and we, we were getting so used to his presence there that we thought, you know, he was going to be a mind reader, you know, <laughs> right. which he wasn't. Well. And um, it's just such a metaphor for saying, like, you have to tell your GPS in your car where you mm. want to go. And you have to know where you're at so it can calculate the route. And right. then, uh, you know, do you need to bring your snow tires or do you need to yeah, bring... Even the, the smartest computers can't read your mind. No. Oh, not yet. Uh, so we're in China. Which which city? Uh, Shanghai. Shanghai. Beautiful. I've been there. Yeah. That's it's amazing. It's, it's gorgeous. It's an unbelievable city. And I can't even imagine what it is now. You know, this is a few it years is. back. I was yeah. there like six years ago, I believe. But yeah. it was... We took the high-speed train from from... Beijing to, to Shanghai. Oh, what an amazing country. It, it's um, Somebody one time told me it's like the Jetson meets the Flintstones. Yeah, exactly. Because that's what we saw. Going, you know, 300 kilometers per hour, that we couldn't find one bare piece of land. It was either farm or high-rise buildings. Farm, high-rise buildings. Nothing bare. Wow. The entire time. It was mind-blowing. Cool. Sorry to get off the yeah, that's, tangent that's there. Um, so, you know, we're talking about cultivating collaboration here. So mm-hmm. anything in particular about the community, Avantage, how can how can the community help you or how can you support the community? And, I mean, again, I know that you bring a wealth of experience and knowledge there. Well, I think, for me, community is the way I live. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it is just so important. For me, I come more with a, and I, I know you know, know this term too, a servant attitude. Right? Because everything you put out in the world comes back to you tenfold. Yes. And it's getting to know people, getting to understand how can I support them. And, and just understand, like, bringing more people in. Because the more we're, we're to, we have to offer, the richer it becomes. Yeah, that's beautiful. And, and that's, that's really what this is all about, is, is being able to give and lift each other up, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, rising tides rises all ships. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I love it. I love it. This was amazing. Thank you so much, Elsa. Oh, it's been a blast. Though. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So, uh, wanted to tell everyone where they can find you. The the address to your website. The the. Yeah, it's uh, www.morethanjustfine.com, and that's also my email. And my name is spelled E L S E, even though it's named with an A, hello, sound like an A. Right. E-L-S-E at more than just fine.com. Um, they can send the, you an email or there's a form on there they can Yeah, check or, out. you know, they, they can go on my um, Facebook page, which is also more than just fine. Um, just reach out to me. Yeah. Awesome. And if you're a Vantage member, her profile on Avantage is Elsa Johnson Coaching. Correct. That's where they'll find uh, your available offers. What are you most excited about for 2021? Oh, where do I start? To wrap up. Yeah. To wrap up, I know. No, I, I think it's meeting people in person like you guys. You know, it's like, I think if anything 2020 has taught us, it's it's the connection. You know, mm-hmm. um, the connection, the human connection. You were talking about a computers starting to read our mind. I don't care how technologically advanced we get. It is still that human connection. You know, somebody with Absolutely. a beating heart that is in front of you that, that you can connect with. Absolutely. Great. Great uh, way to to wrap this up. Thanks again. I appreciate you being here, Mark. Good to see you, my friend. Absolutely. Yeah, excited. This and, is you fun. know, and we're gonna be we're gonna be looking to to do our next episode and all of this good stuff. So looking I looking forward to it. Yeah. So thanks for thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate it. And I'm so glad to have met you in person and uh, see you outside of the box of a computer. <laughs> Same here. Thank you for having me. All right, everyone. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>